Hello, welcome to Self Care Sunday. I know it's kind of later now. Um, I did do some hiking today, so I thought it was better to log on now and talk with you guys. So today, and today I knew I was going to kind of go deep. This one might be, I was thinking about making it into two parts, but I didn't want to do that, so I'm just going to do it today. And you could watch it on your own time. And I have my notes on my phone. Hold on a second, let me pull it up. Um, because I'm trying not to print stuff out all the time, you know, and waste paper. So I have my notes on my phone, so if you see me looking constantly over here, that's why. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about how, when you feel stuck, how to get unstuck and start working towards your per purpose. And so this is for someone who um, might be feeling stuck in their life, maybe stagnant, maybe bored. Maybe like, what am I doing with my life? Wanting to like maybe start over, um, take a new direction. It could be so many different things. You could have gone through so, a big change, a divorce, a retirement, or maybe thinking about going through a change like that. And this is really about, um, it's just like a, a starting point, I would say, to really get unstuck and jumpstart your life and start working towards maybe you want to try to figure out what your purpose is. And I want to talk about that first because there's not like usually one thing that's your whole entire life's purpose. There's different things that are going to come into your life and out of your life at certain times that are going to be um, like what makes you feel like you have purpose in the morning. So going by like the blue zones, and if you don't know what the blue zones is, uh, look that up. It's like the long, the communities with the longest, uh, the most, I should say, centurions, people living to 100 or over. And they studied all these, these um, communities all over the world, and they found what were the commonalities between them. And so one of those things was having a purpose. And it doesn't have to be some huge, enormous thing. It could be like, you know, maybe this guy, it was his job. He was a farmer, a goat farmer or something like that. And it was his job to provide the town with the milk or whatever, or whatever it was, something like that. It doesn't have to be, it just has to be something that you like, you feel good about, and it makes you feel like you have a purpose when you wake up in the morning. So I don't want you to feel like this pressure to find this, like, uh, finding world peace type of purpose in your life you know for years and years my purpose was raising my children and now that they're adults even though they're very involved in my lifestyle it's not my total purpose you know my purpose now is helping other women through what I went through in an easier fashion an easier quicker way and um, this is definitely one of the things all the all the steps this is like a 12 step and I also have a download of this some of you may have even downloaded this it's my it's like a ebook that I've created and it has 12 steps in it and when you when you download it um, you'll also get emails every day kind of reminding you to keep going through the steps and also kind of helping you through it and I also ask you to kind of like interact with me a little bit and some of you do some of you don't but it's a little bit of um, accountability encouragement kind of a thing so if you want to do that I will give you the link at the end of this so that you can grab it if you want it's totally free I have to excuse my appearance I am like it is so hot and a lot of you know I live in the mountains so we don't you, we don't have a need for air conditioning up here it's just not hot a lot but it's been really hot this year and I'm dying yeah it's horrible um, I do have a fan but I've turned it off I have like an exhaust fan that really it gets cool up here at night um, not too cool recently but usually it goes in the summer it gets down into the 50s at night so it cools off so nice you don't need an air conditioner it's so nice but lately oh my god it's so humid so I was out hiking all day and like legit picking blueberries in the woods I seriously was and picked some more at a girlfriend's house um, she's got like a lot of uh, different berries there and so we picked blackberry blackberries not blueberries did I say blueberries blackberries um, so I'm gonna make I we didn't get a ton because they're just starting to be ready now and the ones in the woods are smaller because they're kind of wild um, but I am going to make a thing of jam. Jelly. I'm going to make jelly because I don't like the seeds. There's too many seeds. Um, so anyway, 
I am sweaty and hot and like I can't even put clothes on. I'm just so hot. <laughs> it's just so hot. All right. All right, so let's get started. So step number one is acknowledging your starting point. And one of the reasons why this is so important is because you can't get to where you're going unless you know where you're starting. So you need to know, so just like when you're doing like a GPS or something on your phone, you need to know your, where you are located right now and then where you're going. So it's the same thing in life. So acknowledging your starting point is really important. Now I want you to get a notebook and a pen um, so pause the video if you're watching the replay most people watch the replay so I'm just, just going to assume that most people are watching the replay um, and for those of you in the empowered woman group because I usually go live in both, both groups um, I could not do that today so I'm going to just post the the recording so I apologize that I couldn't be live in there today so you're going to ask yourself these questions so um, have you lost your zest for life? And then you're gonna, and th then the, gonna write why. Why do you think that is? Um, what was the last time you felt excited about life, and what were you doing? So really start to think about this. These are really powerful journaling questions. Now, if you don't like journaling, so like if you really want to jumpstart your life and get unstuck, you're gonna have to do the work. It's not just like some magic bullet one thing you have to do. You really have to go inward and reconnect with yourself if you really want to do this. So you have to do this work. Even if you just write out one sentence as an answer to these, just go through it. And when you have this book, you can do it like over and over again. And whenever I do any type of journaling activity, I work with this coach and she teaches mostly about like money blocks and stuff like that. I do the journaling work over and over and over and over again. It's like stuff keeps coming up. It's almost like maintenance that you have to do. So. Um, this, is, this is really important for you to ask yourself these questions. Why did you stop doing what lights you up? And how are you spending this time right now? So some of the answers to that question might be like, well, I had kids, so I could, didn't have enough time or whatever. Um, so then another question you might ask yourself is, do you find yourself looking at other women or if you're a man, other men and wishing that you had what they have and why? Okay. Do you find yourself bored and uninspired? why so answer these questions because this really I'm like scrolling on the screen meanwhile I really need to scroll on my notes which is really funny because this really helps you reconnect with yourself and know where you're at right now so like if you're really stuck you're just gonna know this is what my starting point and I would dedicate like I would buy a notebook for this and just dedicate a whole notebook for for this um, you don't need like a fancy journal you could buy one if you want but I would dedicate a whole notebook to this. This could be like a master class, this, this book. I probably, maybe I will do a master class. Hmm, maybe I'll do that. Do you lack energy and curiosity? Why? Why do you think that is? Just write what you think. There's no right or wrong answers to any of these questions. You're just reconnecting with yourself. Pay attention to when you get those little boosts of energy and, and then pay attention to what you're doing. Like, when do you feel really good? When do you feel excited? What are you doing? Like, are you hanging out with your kids? Or maybe some of you have grandchildren. Are you in the garden? Are you exercising? Are you doing yoga? Are you running? Like, when I'm running, I feel great. I feel fantastic. When was the last time you had curiosity about something new? A class, something you were learning, anything? Like, think about what it was. And did you know, um, okay. Uh, that was the last question. I'm sorry. So answer those questions and really go through them. Okay. Um, having a purpose is in life is not like a need. Like I was talking about early with the blue zones. This is like um, most of the things that they came up with eight things that serve communities that have people living a long time. And they're not just living. They're functional in society. They're not like laying in bed and sick. They're functional in society and going about their lives and they're over a hundred years old. And, you know, having a purpose was one of them. Being, having a, being a part of the community was a nun, a, another one. So it's not, it's not like um, a luxury to be thinking about what gives you purpose when you wake up in the morning. It's a need. It's a human need. So you're going to Number one is action step is answering those questions, and that's it. 
okay? Um, in the book, I write out affirmations for each step. And so the affirmation for number one is I acknowledge how I feel and I completely love and support myself. I'm proud that I'm making the first steps to improve my life now. So just because you are where you're at and you don't like it doesn't mean there's anything wrong with it, okay? doesn't mean that your, your life isn't good. It just means that you're feeling a little stagnant and you need some, a change. In order to make a change, you have to do something different. You can't keep doing the same things you've been doing all along in your life to make, make a change. And sometimes... Um, I know myself, um, you just don't know the steps to do. So you don't know what, what's, what's different. How can I get this started? That's what this is. It's a jump start. Blah, 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 blah. So uh, tips. Never compare yourself to other women or men. Um, we all have different paths and experiences, so there is no comparison. Always in support and build each other up. So this is important because you might be looking at a friend or something and say, oh, she's so ahead or she's, she's behind and there should be no judgment there because the places we're at in our lives have to do with a lot of extend, uh, like outside the circumstances that we have no control over. And so th this person might appear to be super far ahead, but they might be super unhappy on the inside. Or they could just be ahead and really happy, which is great for them, but maybe they had a lot of good things like lining them up for that in life and not everybody has that so there should be no comparisons because you really don't know anyone else's full story so put the blinders on for this one I what comparison is the killer of like all dreams now we're going to go into step number two revisit what brings you joy okay um, so this is about looking at so if you're really feeling stagnant and stuck and you're having no fun you're not inspired when you wake up in the morning. You really need to start looking at what makes you happy. That's what we're all here for. We're not here to have a career. We're not here to have jobs. We're here to have fun. We're here to have joy in our lives. We're here to experience life. And I know that's not what we're told. That's not what we're taught by society. But that is the truth. That's what we, that's what we are here for. So you need to start adding little bits of joy into your life. So what you're going to, you know, what usually happens is we get busy in our lives. We're doing, we're working, we're raising kids, we're taking care of, every, of, of everyone, especially women, because almost it's almost expected by society for women to do all the household work, take care of the kids, and everything else on top of working full time. Okay, and so you really lose that connection with yourself when you're doing stuff for everybody else. And if you haven't listened to my latest podcast episode, I really go deep into this in there. Um, but we spend so much time doing that, years and years and years doing that, and you lose yourself. You lose the connection with yourself. So that's what this is about. It's about starting to reconnect with yourself. Oh my God, my my phone keeps closing like so quickly. It's very annoying. Um, so the action step. One of the things that we're going to do, we're going to look back through the years and we're going to revisit different times in our lives. Okay. Um, and we're going to write down things that brought us joy during those times. Try to remember certain maybe situations or events or whatever that made you really happy. So you're going to go into your elementary years. You're going to go all the way back. Your teen years, your 20s, your 30s, 40s, on and onward and forward. Doesn't matter you know, how old you are. Just go through all of it. Write down whatever your first thought is and don't question it. Nobody else is reading this. This is just for you. And write, like, kind of, like, write how it made you feel. So, like, whenever I write a gratitude list in the morning, I write, I'm grateful for this, and this is how it made me feel. Because the feelings are really what stay with us, okay? So knowing how it made you feel is really important. Now, I want you to look at the list. So you're going to have your, you know, your elementary, your teen, 20, 30, 40, and you're going to write, and there's going to be similarities. So, don't, like, write, if it's the same thing, every damn period still write it down don't not write it down because you already wrote it down just keep thinking and I want you to circle like all the commonalities you know like if you were a kid and you love to go out in the garden with your parents and then when you were a teen you made your first garden and then when you were in your 20s you had a garden and when you were in your 30s you took some gardening classes and then whatever and you just that's a commonality gardening 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 makes me fucking happy okay so that's me. That might not be everybody else. So 
I want you to look at these things and then ask yourself if you're doing any of them. And if you're doing none of them, I want you to make, I want you to look at the things that are on this list, okay? And ask yourself if, if these are things that are reasonable for you to do again, okay? So if you, like, were really into BMXing when you were, <laughs> when you were a kid and now you're like 80 years old and you're afraid you might break something, Maybe it's not reasonable that you start BMXing again, you know, something like that. So, and then I want you to just actually add it into your life. So maybe find a group or like a, a group of other people that do that. Join a Facebook group. Um, find like, you know, if you, if you want to start running again or riding a bike or swimming, find a place where you could do that. Put one thing on your schedule each week. And don't just like say you're going to do it. Like actually put it on your schedule. Start figuring out how you can add this back into your life. Now, I know we all have responsibilities and lives. So, you know, you might not be able to ride your bike every single day. But you could ride your bike once a week, right? We could all do this. All right. So start adding that back in. So that's the action step. Um, the affirmation for this is I'm on a journey to get to know myself again and love who I am. So this is really where you're starting to reconnect with what you loved in the past to remind you what you might want to do now. You know, so if you really lost that connection with yourself, this is like a reminder. Um, okay, so um, one of the tips in the book is to... Uh, remind yourself every day to add joy and not necessarily the things on this list but little things that make you happy you should have a little bit of fun every day if that's talking to a friend having lunch with a friend um, walking your dog playing with your dog maybe it's just having a cup of coffee outside on your deck whatever it is whatever's gonna make you happy make sure you do these little things every single day Okay, now we're going to step three, create a path where you feel lit up. So I'm going to try to, I don't want to be on here, like, I don't want to keep you really long. So I'm going to move along quick. And I would encourage you, if this interests you, to download the book, okay? Because it'll be very helpful to you. So you have this, all these notes. Okay, so find a path where you feel lit up. I want you to make a list of all the people and situations that you think are energy vampires. <gasps> Now, what does that mean? So when you're around a person that, and, and after you leave them, you feel like, like exhausted. They make you tired. They're t they make you tired to be around them. Now, on a piece of paper, create three columns. You're going to name the three columns, ditch, delegate, and do. Oh, I'm sorry. Not just all the people, but situations too, things that you're doing. So people, situations, things that you're doing you know, that make you feel that they're energy vampires. They suck the life out of you. Then you're going to make the list, ditch, delegate, do, okay? And I want you to put these energy suckers on each list. Can you just completely ditch this activity or person? Uh, that sounds terrible, doesn't it? But there are some people in our lives that should be ditched at some point. Can you delegate? You can't delegate a person. You could spend less time with them, but you can't delegate a person. You can delegate an activity, um, um, so at, see what you can delegate and then what are the things that you just you can't d ditch or delegate and you have to do them so this is about lessening your time with energy vampire people and activities if this energy sucker is a person it would be hard to put it on one of the uh, these columns and said decide to end a relationship or manage it better with strong boundaries which is a whole nother topic that I cover um, I'm sure I've talked about it in this group, and if I haven't yet or you haven't seen it, I would just go back and look at some of the past videos, um, but I will cover it at some point if I haven't yet. Um, then all you need to do is follow through depending on the column that you put it in. Now I want to go into like delegating. So if you hate folding the towels or you hate putting the laundry away, but you don't mind folding it, this is something a significant other can do or kids can do. But one of the things I have to remind you is to let go of the perfection or let go of it being done your way and just be happy that it's getting done. Because having someone do the work but worrying about whether they're going to do it right isn't going to, it, it's not going to be remove that energy sucking capability out of it. You're still going to be stressed. You need to let go of it completely. Just say, this is not my job anymore. Okay. And if you're saying in your head, 
you know, my significant other would never do this and my kids would never do it. Um, well, I would say that that's ridiculous because <laughs> you shouldn't be the only one doing it. Like, everybody lives in a household. And I used to say this to my kids all the time. It didn't always make a difference. But um, I used to say, you live in this household. You're a part of this household. You have to be a part of making it run. That's what I would say. I'm not, you know, I'm not your personal slave. I always joke around and say, oh, my God, I would love to have a wife like me. I would love it. I would honestly, could you imagine how much shit you can get done if you had a wife like yourself? Oh, my God, that would be fabulous. It really would. Um, so following through is the hardest thing. If you decided, so like, for example, if you decided that social media was a major energy sucker, definitely can be. Um, then schedule a 15, 15 minutes per day and then stick with it. So don't do it all day long. I, I have a, a TikTok scrolling problem addiction. So that is a little bit of a problem with me. Okay. The affirmation is I control the energy that enters into my space. This is a big deal. I protect it like life depends on it because it does. My life is filled with positive energy. Now, what does this have to do with life purpose? Well, what it has to do with life purpose is creating space for the things that you love. So we talked about all those things that we want to do again, right? But you're like, Tina, I don't have time. I'm working all the time. I have to cook dinner for my kids. I have to drive this kid here. Well, what can you delegate? Can you delegate dinner somehow? Like, like maybe you get one of those meal services. Can you have someone else drive your kid to practice? Can your significant other cook dinner once a week? I mean, it doesn't sound like a lot, but once a week, having someone else cook? Magical. Maybe your kids are old enough to cook or prepare some kind of a dinner. Maybe they could start it. Maybe they could just wash the dishes. Whatever. Like, what can you delegate? Really get down to the nitty-gritty, even if it's just little parts of a task that can be delegated. Like, just think about if you delegated five minutes to, like, if you, if you cut five minutes off a lot of your tasks when you got home from work, so say you, you have, like, five different things, like five minutes that take five minutes each and you manage to delegate all of those to other members of your family or maybe you ditch them all together that's 25 minutes of free time to go ride your bicycle to go swimming to take your dog for a walk that's 25 minutes of free time for you so that's what this is about okay oh my god my phone keeps closing i know there's a way to fix that but i don't want to spend too much time figuring that out right now step number four is eat real food now, short and simple, what is real food? Real food is stuff that doesn't either doesn't have an ingredients list at all, say an apple, or has a minimal ingredient list, five things or less. Now, this sounds super simple, but it's not. It's super. It's 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 time consuming, and it takes a long time to change your life over to this. Why is this important? This gives us more energy. This this keeps us healthy. We feel better when we eat real food. Okay, so my biggest, I'm going to read the action steps for you, okay? Eat more fruits, veggies, legumes, nuts, seeds, and whole grains. These are real foods. Read labels. That's the most important thing. So if you do anything with this step, I would encourage you to read labels and figure out what you're putting into your body. And if you don't know what it is, look it up. If it's not something you would feed to your baby, or like, you know, some of you may be, you know, like my age and you're like, what baby, you know, but just if you wouldn't feed it to a, a baby, then you probably shouldn't put it in your mouth either. Okay. So, um, learn what you're putting into your body and then just like slowly switch shit out. So like if you have a, a salad dressing in your refrigerator and it has MSG in it or something like that, or maltodextrin, which is horrible for your blood sugar. So if you're pre-diabetic, you shouldn't have maltodextrin, which is in a lot of shit. It's in a lot of shit. Um, make your own salad dressing at home. You don't need to buy salad dressing. It's basically oil, like an acid, a fat, and then flavor. That's it. So oil, vinegar, flavor. Oil, lemon juice, flavor. You know, fat. So that's a whole other subject. Um, drink lots of water. We're made of water, so definitely drink lots of water. We know that. Remove all added sugar. Now, if you're eating real whole food, you're not going to be getting a ton of added sugar. But if you're if you're drinking like sugary coffee drinks, um, I would wean yourself off of those. If you're drinking any type of soda, even if it's diet soda, diet soda is the worst possible thing. If that's the only thing you're doing, you need to 
quit that. Like, no if, ands, or buts. There's just nothing good about it. And if you need help with that, you can reach out to me because that is just, that would be a game changer for you. Okay. There's also to remind you, like, when you're look, reading labels, there's 64, and I'm sure there's more now, different names for sugar. So if you don't know what something is and it has uh, uh, OSE on the end of it, a lot of times that's a type of sugar. So look it up. So sometimes when you're doing this, it's a little bit of a detox when you're working yourself off of these different foods that are, you know, I would do it slow. You know, if you're working yourself off of processed foods and sugar, I would do it slow, one meal at a time. This week I'm going to start and I'm going to only focus on my breakfast. I'm going to have really real whole food for breakfast. And until you can get that down and have it be comfortable for yourself, I would not move on from there. I would just take little steps, even if it's just one dinner a week, little baby steps. But sometimes you might feel worse before you feel better when you're detoxing out of it, especially if you have a lot of sugar in your system. Okay, so that's another reason. Sorry if that was a horrible sound. My mic just fell over. Hold on a second. Um, okay, that's fine. Sorry if that sounded horrible. I don't know if that sounded bad. Um, so take it slow. Okay. Affirmation. Food is my medicine. I am what I eat. I love myself, so I care for myself. It is true, you are what you eat. So I am a, right now I am a cucumber. <laughs> I have so many cucumbers in my garden. Step five, movement. Okay, what is eating well? Well, I told you what eating well has to do with um, finding your purpose. Movement is the same thing. It serves your energy, okay? This is about feeling good and serving your energy and making yourself available, having the energy for all those things that you're going to love. All these things connect with each other. Um, and the best thing I could say for this, I'm going to I'm going to go right to the action steps. Do something, find something that you like. Don't go to the gym if you fucking hate it. Don't do it. If you thrive in group classes, I like going to group classes. I don't like going to the gym, but I like group classes like yoga or I used to do kickboxing. I used to do boxing. Um, I used to do taekwondo. I used to do MMA. I, I like, I did CrossFit for a while. So I like group classes, but I don't like going to the gym. I lift weights at home and I'm, I, I'm uh, the type of person that can do that. Not, it's like kind of my least favorite thing, lifting weights, but I really love doing yoga. And I do love going to group classes. I really kind of miss it. It's not very available where I live right now. So some ideas. Walking, hiking, running, swimming, biking, yoga, Pilates, martial arts, weightlifting, gardening, sports, dancing. Oh, what is that workout that people do all the time? Zumba. I never did that because I'm kind of a spaz and I don't want to embarrass myself. But I would do it if a friend dragged me. I would definitely do it. It would be fun. It would be a good laugh. Keep trying new things until you find something you like enough to do every day. This is important. Find something you like. Just because I'm a runner doesn't mean that's any better than walking. As a matter of fact, I think sometimes running is better than um, walking is better than running because it's not as hard on your body. Um, depending on the type of runner you are. I'm very careful with my running to keep myself safe. Work up a sweat at least, I would say at least four times a week. Um, some people say every day you should work up a sweat. Um, I mean, there's different ways to do that. Like, um, well, there's lots of ways to do that. But any of these, and like now with this weather, all you have to do, like right now, I'm sweating right now, so I've definitely worked up a sweat today, and I went for a hike too. Park further away, like so when you're parking, I, these are little ways to like add more activity, more steps into your life. Park further away from where you're going. Always keep safety in mind though. Like if you don't feel safe doing that, then just don't do it. The same thing about taking the stairs. I'm a stairs person. I don't like escalators. I don't like elevators. Um, I always take the stairs. If there's stairs, I take the stairs. I don't care if I'm carrying two suitcases. I take the stairs. I always do. But that's more about fear with me. <laughs> it's very motivating. Enlist a friend or family member to join you. The more the merrier. This is so true. If, you, if you're meeting someone for a run, you're going to show up almost oh, very likely. If you're meeting someone for a yoga class, you're going to show up. So get other people involved. If you're planning on going for a walk every day, even if it's just for 
15 minute walk um, after dinner, which is very beneficial after dinner walk. Um, get someone to do it with you. It's, it's more enjoyable too. Every day move, honor your body. If you don't feel well rested at the time, like if you're feeling tired, take it easy, do something easier. Like I always do, like I'll do like yin yoga, which is like restorative yoga when I'm really tired. If I had, had a long run or if I did like some weightlifting, I'll do some yin yoga. Um, take, if you don't feel like doing anything, but not because you're feeling lazy, but because either you're sick or something like that, honor yourself, honor your body, take care of yourself, take a day off so that tomorrow you can do it. Okay. Affirmation. Okay, this is a quote from, um, what's the zombie movie with Brad Pitt? Oh my God, I'm blanking out. It's one of my favorite zombie movies, the one with Brad Pitt. You know what it is. It's one of the best ones. Anyway, this quote is from there. He, he says this. He says it in Spanish first, and then he says it in English. It's when they're taking um, cover with the, the Spanish family in the apartment building, and he's trying to get them to go with him, cause he, and he says, movement is life. I love that movie too much. My kids laugh at me, but I love that movie. Anyway, movement is life. I always say if you keep moving, they can't they can't throw dirt on you. Um, so it's like movement is life. I give myself life by the movements I take. I love my body, and I'm grateful for how it supports me. Okay, and I am always grateful about how my body supports me. Step five. Okay. Oh, no, that was step five. Sorry. Blah, 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 blah. If you're not normally an active person and you don't know what to try, just make a list of a bunch of things and try them one by one. Have a friend do it with you. It could be like an experiment to see what you like to do. It could be a lot of fun, actually. Okay. Step six. I'm sorry. Okay, perfect, because we're at like 30 minutes. So I'm trying to get, trying to get this through in like an hour, okay? Get outside every day. I don't care if it's 10 degrees, get outside. Like, seriously, just get outside, get some sunshine on your face, take a deep breath. If it's freezing, go back inside. I don't like being outside when it's super cold either, but my dogs force me to go outside every day, and I'm very glad for it, very glad for it. It can be hard if you work indoors or, you know, like if you are you have a traditional nine to five job, it could be hard, but you could go outside during lunch. If you don't get a lunch break, then I think you should just start looking for a new job. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry. And you should start looking for a new job, but yeah, or you could go for a walk in the morning on all seriousness. I'm, I'm joking around, but, but no, seriously, you should, if you don't get a lunch break or some kind of a break, you should get a new job. Um, and I know my kids work in the food service industry. You don't get any breaks. So I know this. I know this. So I'm not insensitive to those types of jobs. I know that that's a fact. They don't even get to pee when they want to pee. Um, sorry. I can keep getting all these warnings about my bad, shitty service. Okay, some of the things you can expect with regular time outside every day. It can help reduce anxiety and depression. It helps boost your vitamin D levels. Um, we're all deficient on vitamin D. I always get my vitamin D tested when I do a physical every year, and it's always low. And I am outside a lot, a lot. It can help increase creativity, concentration, and mental clarity. Uh, it helps lower blood pressure and reduces cortisol levels. Being active outdoor helps us age more gracefully by improving sleep and improving mobility. So these are all really good positive things. We all know this. Getting outside with a friend is even better. So when you combine all these positive activities, like getting outside, being with a friend, and exercise, that's like the magical trifecta. You know, it's like these are such such so good for your health. Okay, we f all feel better when we get outside to play. So make the time to do these things. So walking your dog for a few minutes before you go to work. If it's if it's dark out, just staying close to home if you don't feel comfortable or walking the dog after dinner or walking yourself after dinner just little intervals you know five minutes here five minutes there you take your kids to soccer practice walk around the field take a walk you don't have to watch them the whole time um, just just get in some activity get outside and and feel good and help yourself feel good so start small 
like maybe like with a five minute work, commit to doing it a few times a week, put it on your schedule, attach it to another habit, meaning like walking your dog or going to get the mail. You know, so like if you're going out to get the mail, make a commitment to walk all the way down the block first, all the way back and then grab the mail and come in. Same thing like with the dog, you know, walk, you know, don't just take the dog out so that the dog can pee or poop, actually go for a walk, you know. Um, try to, uh, go with a friend, mixing it with, you know, a friend and getting outside and doing like an exercise activity is just so good for you. Like I said earlier, um, affirmation. So my body needs sunshine and fresh air to thrive and grow just like a plant. We're just like plants. Okay. It helps give us energy too. When I connect with nature, I connect with myself. Okay. So this is part of us reconnecting with ourselves. Okay. Step seven, connection. Being a part of a community makes us feel like you're a part of something bigger. I was talking about this earlier with the blue zones. You're part of something bigger than yourself. It's important for us as human beings to feel accepted and to be able to support um, ourselves and others. Being connected helps us feel a sense of purpose. So here we are, we're already talking about purpose. Remember, we wanted to add purpose into our life that we might not get from anything else. So it's almost like knowing that... Um, you know, like say you have five people in the community, maybe you're the one that always makes the brownies whenever you get together and the other person always wants to have the dinners and one person likes having everybody at their house. You know, maybe you hate it, but the other person loves it. There's always like these different people that have these different purposes in your community. But some people, a lot of us don't even connect with our neighbors anymore. So I would encourage you to try to connect with the people in your community, even the people that work in the stores in your community. Um, goodness, I have so many challenges today with technology. Be sure to, okay, this is another step. Oh my goodness. Spend time with, talk to, or write to your friends and family. Make a point. You'd be surprised how much you're not connecting with your family. I, I actually, purposely write on my to-do list when I want to contact a family member. Say somebody called me and I need to call them back. I don't want to completely forget about it. Actually, I need to call my cousin Howie because he called me the other day. <laughs> I've been trying to find a good time. Maybe tonight I should call him because it is a weekend. Um, but yeah, Howie's on my list. I want to call my cousin Howie. Um, so staying connected with those people, those friends that live far away, be the one. Don't be like, well, they haven't contacted me. You be the one um, to contact them. Just make a point to check in with people. Even if you know they're okay, you see their pictures on Facebook or whatever, just check in with them. Ask them. You know, Facebook, um, the Facebook presentation that most people put out there is not real, right? We all put, like, our, our best stuff on there, most of us. So reconnect with people. So action steps, make a point to connect with the people in your household and life daily, okay? So this is even the people that you live with, like asking them, how was your day? What was the best, your favorite part of the day? Things like that, your kids. Make plans with friends, family members, and loved ones, and be sure to put them on your calendar. So like, if, even if you see a family member every day, but you haven't like actually spent time with them or done something with them, make a plan with them. Share a meal with someone that you care for. Write, text, email, call, or tell the people you love how much you care and appreciate them. Don't assume that they know this. They might be going through something hard. You might not have heard from them in a while, and maybe that's all they need to feel better that day. Everyone always benefits from hearing how much they're loved. There's no, there's not a bad thing about this, unless you're contacting like an ex, an ex. Don't do that. <laughs> Get involved and spend time doing the things you love to meet, you meet new t people this way. So a lot of people ask me this, how can I make more friends? Um, it's harder as you get older. This is all true. Um, we're, we're more picky as we get older. I don't think it's harder. I think we know what we want and we know what we like and we're not willing to really step out of that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, but if you really want to find people that you're going to be aligned with, just go out and do the stuff you love. Like, like, like early, like if you love going to yoga classes, go to yoga classes, meet new friends at your yoga classes, talk to people. Don't just go in and go out, actually talk to people, you know, and don't give up if the first person doesn't want to talk to you, you know, they might be in a hurry. They might have to get home, you know, talk to another person. So the affirmation is the people I choose to have in my life 
are loved and it's important to let them know this. So it's, it's really important to per be purposeful about the people in your life and the people in your community, okay? And I think more now than ever where um, society seems to be going through a lot of really rough stuff right now, I think reconnecting with your community could be a good thing, even if you might not completely agree with everything with your neighbors. Um, knowing that they're there and being friendly with them as long as they're friendly back can be very important. Step eight, self-care. You know this is my favorite thing. Okay, making time for self-care can be really important and I want you to realize that it's not selfish because the better that you take care of yourself, the better you that you can put out into the world. So the better version of yourself that you can put out into the world. Um, and really check it in with yourself every so often and being like, how am I over here? Like, where am I feeling out of balance? And just like verbally checking in with yourself. And I actually have a self-care masterclass that does this for you. I will also put that. So I'm giving you two tools today. You can download this ebook and then you could also do the free self-care masterclass. And this helps you tune in to all the areas of your life. Um, but a big part of self-care is boundaries. We talked about boundaries very quickly earlier. So I believe that learning to set and maintain boundaries in your life is is the the foundation for good self-care because if you don't have boundaries and you're not willing to maintain them, none of none of the self-care that you put into your life is going to help you at all, okay? Um, if you feel like someone's walking all over you or if you feel like you're saying things like I should do this, I have to do this, or you feel kind of resentful for someone for something that's that's a place where you need to set a boundary maybe look at that like if you feel resentful that you have to cook dinner every day when you get home from work but your husband sits inside and watches tv then that's that's a cue that you need to set a boundary and the boundary should be maybe he could do dinner a couple of nights a week or maybe you could do it together you know so go through this health and wellness section in the book and this guide daily and add balance where you need it. So look at all these different places and, you know, put those things into your life. Take what you need from this guide and leave the rest, you know, whatever works for you in that moment. Set an example for your loved ones and your kids. Um, when they see you taking care of yourself, like you say you're resting or you're not going to cook dinner tonight because you're, you're tired and you need to rest or you're going for a walk after dinner. When they see you doing these things for yourself and making yourself happy, then they know it's okay to do it too. They know that it's okay for them to take care of themselves. Examine your life and decide where you need to place some boundaries, um, where you need to set and maintain them, and start doing this. If you need help with this, this is something I specialize in and I can help you. You could just reach out and ask for this. Um, create space and balance. when you, have, you create space and balance when you have boundaries in your life. So this is another way to create more time for yourself to do the things you love. Like even the example I used with having someone else cook dinner for a few nights a week gives you that space to take your cup of coffee out on the deck and sit outside, you know, or whatever, spend time with your kids or take the dog for a walk, you know. These are just small little things, small little changes that you can make that can, but, but they, they make a, have a huge impact on your life. Remember, these things take practice and patience. Start by taking small steps. So don't just try to do all 12 steps all at once and expect that that's going to, you're going to stick with that. You're not. You're going to get, you're going to just be overwhelmed with that. Just do one, pick one that you think will have the biggest impact on your life. Okay. What was, was there an affirmation? I pay attention to the things that help me thrive because I deserve the very best. And when you treat yourself well and you, tr you, take care of yourself at a high standard. It also shows other people how you're willing to be treated. So it in turn teaches them how to treat you. Okay, so set in a good example for how you want to be treated. Step nine, love yourself unconditionally. If you love yourself exactly the way you are, that you don't need to change anything unapologetically, everyone else will follow suit. Going back to the first step, learning all the things that we love definitely helps. You learn more about who you are, um, here are a few more questions that you can answer that can help with this. So this is a pen and paper thing again. Are you changing the way you act with certain people to avoid conflict or to make them happy? 
if so, why? Do you find yourself trying to do things that you don't like to do to please others? Why? These are also places to set boundaries, <laughs> by the way. Are you worried about sharing your beliefs and dreams with other people you love and spend the other people that you love or the people you spend time with because you're afraid of judgment? Why? So like you have these dreams, these crazy dreams, but you're afraid to share them with your friends or your significant other because you never showed anyone this side of yourself. Why are you hiding it? Why can't you be 100% yourself? Are you judging the way you look by comparing yourself to other women or representations of women in the media you consume? Yeah. Ask yourself if these are true representations of true women, okay, of today, or are they unrealistic rep representations? I notice when I look at social media and like when I look at TikTok, a lot of people use filters. I don't, I don't use filters on purpose because I don't, I just want to look like myself. I don't know. I know there's definitely like right now I could look better right now if I had makeup on and my hair was done and all that stuff. I could look better right now, but I'm just, this is how I am today, and Sunday's like my day to kind of like chill and relax, and so this is how I'm taking care of myself. I'm not going to stress myself out and care about what other people think. I think I heard my dog crying. I'm not sure what that is. I'm not sure if that's what that was. Um, so ask yourself these questions. These can be signs that you're not in alignment with yourself, and you're questioning who you are. Okay, so action steps. Don't be afraid to be yourself 100% of the time. Start bringing that person out. The people that love you won't care, and you will be surrounded by people who are more in sync with you. It's less work to be yourself, okay? It's tiring to try to put some kind of facade on for other people. The more you're yourself, the more relaxed you'll be. The people, people that love you will love to be around you when they feel, um, they'll feel more connected to you when you're more yourself. This will also feed into your confidence so you'll continue so you continue to be and love yourself okay so like the more you're surrounded with aligned people the more confident you'll feel the more comfortable comfortable you feel yourself Two, remind yourself that you are the only you in the universe you were made perfectly and there is no reason to change or apologize for who you are this is true there's nobody like you as a matter of fact it is your responsibility to live as you are a hundred percent okay Stop getting in the way. Make a list of all the positive, wonderful things about yourself. List at least 20 things. I know this is hard. Ask friends and family if you need help that, that you have a positive relationship with. Okay. Um, this will give you a few traits that they, ask them for like a few traits that they love about you. You might be surprised what comes up. It's kind of fun. At least once a day, look in the mirror and tell yourself how fabulous you are and that you love yourself. Okay, I talked about this in my last podcast too. I know this might feel super weird, but it's a, it's also very beneficial and impactful on your, your self-confidence and, you know, working on self-love and self-acceptance. I actually have a sign on my bathroom mirror that says, hello, beautiful, and it serves anyone who looks in the mirror. Okay, this is true. I do have this sign. Affirmation. I am enough. I've always been enough, and now that I know I'm enough, everybody else knows I'm enough. And this is true. Once you know and act like you're enough, everybody else knows you're enough, too. You don't have to worry about that. And the truth is, most people are more worried about themselves than worried about you. So you shouldn't really care what other people think. Number 10, focus on progress, not perfection. This is important. It's not healthy for us to stand still and be stagnant as human beings. Remember, movement is life. Remember what Brad Pitt said. <laughs> <laughs> We're all going to listen to Brad Pitt. Did you see there was like a video of him wearing a dress or a picture, I'm sorry, of him wearing a skirt. And they asked him why he's wearing a skirt. And he said something like, We're all going to die. We might as well have fun while we're here. <laughs> it's like, that's positive and negative at the same time. Okay, remember, movement is life. It's a human nature to want to learn and grow. This is true. We need to always keep moving and learning and growing throughout our entire life. This, does, this should not stop as we get older. It's your job to feed and nourish this desire and keep your mind and imagination alive. Right now, let's focus on reigniting your desire to learn new things and have fun doing them. Okay? So one time I watched this TED Talk, and there was a guy, he talked about this experiment he did, and he said if he tried something new and he kept doing it for 30 days straight. This is the truth. This is how I became 
vegan when I was first vegan. I, I don't call myself vegan anymore. Those of you who know me know I eat eggs sometimes, and I also eat honey. So I don't, I don't call myself vegan, but that's it, right? Uh, if someone gives me a piece of cake with, like, dairy products in it, I'll eat it. You know, I'm not terribly pecky, but um, I try to not to eat dairy. It doesn't really agree with me. Um, so I thought, that sounds like fun. That's why I did it. And it, and I I felt so good after eating, like, vegan, I switched over. That was, like, 15 years ago. So don't be worry about being good at something or looking good. I have a tickle in my throat. <clears throat> I know I'm talking really fast trying to get through this in an hour. That's why I think you should download the book because I'm kind of like, I feel like I'm rushing through it a little bit. Um, so don't worry about being good at something or looking good right now. Just focus on moving forward and learning something new and expanding your life experiences, okay? Have fun with it. You never know what positive thing you might run into or something you might learn or a new hobby that might start up, you know? Um, so this is the action step. This is really hard. Make a list of a hundred things that you always wanted to do or learn. Um, I call this my hundred list. And there was another coach I worked with that did this in the new year. She did it's a little different, like a hundred things you want to do this year. And it's not like all big things. Like, you know, it might be something like, um, I want to have a picnic in Central Park. I totally did that once. I had a picnic with my daughter in Central Park and then we did, um, um, painting. We painted watercolor painting. It was so, I want to do it again. It was so much fun. So make a hundred, a list of a hundred things. This is really hard to do, but it really starts to make you think. It really makes things turn. As a matter of fact, this year I only got up to, in the, I'm in the seventies, but I still, like as the year goes by, I still add new things. And then I look at it and I cross stuff off and it's really fun. Then read and investigate and figure out how to do one of those things and just pick them off. And then like like I just said, look at the list every so often. I keep it in my journal, so I look at it all the time. And it's so much fun to be like, oh, I did that. Cross it off, you know? Or if you're feeling bored with yourself, go onto the list and be like, I'm going to do that. Pick something off the list and do it. So this is a fun activity, so definitely do this one. Um, and then when you're done with that one thing, just move on to the next thing and keep going. It's a lot It's a lot of fun. I'm scrolling on the wrong thing. Some of these things might be scary and uncomfortable, and you might say, I don't really want to do this, but you obviously do because you put it on your list. But just, just keep going. A lot of times fear is more excitement of the unknown, and your brain might be just trying to protect you from that discomfort and that, that unknownness, okay? So keep going. Don't like if you put it on your list, there's something in you that wants to do it. So don't write it off just because you're afraid, you know, like trying to think of something a long time ago, I hired a business coach and this was like, I think, in, I think it might've been in 2018. It was a while ago. And this is before I ever went live on Facebook and I was terrified to do it. But I forced myself to do it, and now I do it all the time, and it's nothing. Like, like it's nothing. I don't even think twice about it. So you just got to get past it. You just got to keep doing it. And I love coming live on Facebook. It's like nothing to me. So um, affirmation. I have the courage to do anything I want. Nothing will hold me back from living my dreams. I am strong, independent, and courageous. My fears will not stand in my way of my goals. Okay? And if you do do something that's super daring, I want to hear about it. So share it with me. Step number 11. I can't believe we're almost done. This is a really important step. If you just do one thing in this whole book, this would be the most magical thing. Gratitude. So start a gratitude practice if you don't have one already. Um, I might just add something to it, too, for you. Gratitude is scientifically proven to improve relationships, physical health, psychological health, empathy, self-esteem, and it can reduce anger. Let's not forget that it attracts, like attracts like, so it's a great place to get started if you're trying to improve your energy and your vibe um, and manifest some really good things coming into your life, right? So when you're starting to make daily gratitude lists, um, I use my journal. Um, I usually do three things or whatever comes up. Um, and what I do is I write what I'm grateful for and then I write how it made me feel. So like if I'm grateful for my children, they make me feel loved, they make me feel connected. Um, 
And then I just like think about that for a minute and I kind of feel the feelings because what really makes it resonate and work is those feelings. Feelings, emotions are what really feeds everything, that, that energizes everything. So really feeling into the gratitude and just being grateful for everything that's around you. So I'm reading this book right now. It's called The Magic and it's a manifestation book, but really um, I think it should be called like gratitude, not magic, because it's all gratitude exercises. Every single one. It's like 30 days. You go through 30 days and every day is a gratitude exercise. And I love it. And the way I look at it, I just read one day every morning. It's a very quick read every morning, five minutes. And then I do, I do the gratitude, whatever it is. I'm trying to think what it was today. So today it was looking at your do, to do list and being grateful that everything is going to get done before you even do it. So just being grateful that it's done and thinking about how it feel, how you're going to feel when you get it done. And I was like, that's kind of interesting. I liked it. But let, there was one day where it was like, be grateful for everything you drink and everything you eat. Just be grateful for it. I was like, this is something I don't normally do. Be grateful every time you spend money. Like grateful for the services you get, like when you pay your cable bill or something like that. So it's a really good book. It's called The Magic. Um, it would be a, like if you really wanted to get into gratitude, I would suggest reading that book. I think it was, I think it's great. I'm going to like... I'm, I'm going to finish 30 days and then I'm going to go back to day one. I'm just going to do a gratitude step every day because it's quick and easy. It's not a lot of work. Okay, so the action step every day, pick a time of the day that works best for you. Some do this in the morning. Some of them do it before. Some people do it before bed. Some do both. And I'm going to give you a little tip with that. Write out at least, I wrote, and here I write five things. Just write out as many as you want. I just want you to start a practice, okay? Nothing is too big or small. It's fine to be grateful for your morning coffee, for the sunrise. If you're just getting started and you're not feeling you like you have anything to be grateful for, be grateful that you woke up. Be grateful that the sun came up. Be grateful that your eyes are working. Be grateful that you have eyelashes. Be grateful you have teeth. Like, you could be grateful for the littlest things, and that's a place to get started when you're not feeling grateful, right? So just do that. Now, the tip that I have for the morning, the morning I write stuff that I'm grateful for, and this was another tip that I got from a book. It wasn't the magic. I think it was, I think she does this in the magic too. I don't know. I think it was from a book called Positively Wealthy. I'm, I'm not really sure, but you take a crystal and you put it in your hand or a rock, or you don't have to do that if you if you think that's really weird and woo woo. You could just do this before you go to bed and you think about what you were grateful for. Just things that happened in that day. You know, like today I went for a hike and I picked the blueberry um, blackberries in the woods and I thought that was fantastic. Um, free blackberries. <laughs> uh, so I would be grateful for that. Like just things like that. So you do that before you go to bed. It's a great um, mindset to be in when you're going to sleep at night instead of worrying about something. And then be grateful for whatever in the morning. What are you, are you feeling? Like usually I'm like always grateful for my kids and my dogs and my business. I'm always grateful for my clients that work with me. So um, just write it out. Affirmation. I'm learning to be grateful for what I have while being excited for what is yet to come. So being grateful for what you have doesn't mean that you can't want for things. It just means that you're grateful for what you have. That's all. But you could still want things. You know what I'm saying? Um, so th that's why I like that affirmation. I'll read it again. I'm learning to be grateful for what I have while being excited for what is yet to come. I, kind of, I really like that one. We're on the last step. Step 12, take action. Okay, so this was a lot. This was a lot of information, right? So I'll give you the link. You download the book so you have a copy of it, and you can go through it one, once by one. But it's an important step for any goal is to want, when you want to reach a goal um, or a solution, don't sit around and wait for things to become great. Don't complain if you have a problem with no solution. Make one, okay? Learn to make the solution. So, like, there was something I was dealing with with um, an affiliate that I work with, and... I was really pissy about it and whiny about it. And I was like, all right, I'm not going to complain. There's no point in me complaining to them about something. I, what I'm going to do is I'm going to think of three to five solutions and I'm just going to email them and say, these are solutions. They might, they might be like, who is this chick? You know, but 
that's a better way to approach things and it might work you know it might be a very legitimate solution that they might use you know so it's a better way to approach anything so don't complain or stay in victim mode find the solution okay um, no one's going to do these things for you. If you want something to happen, you have to take action. No one's going to do it for you. If you want change in your life, you have to change the way you do things. If you keep doing things the same way you've always done them, you're going to keep getting the same things that you've always, always had. So to make any change, you have to get uncomfortable. You have to be comfortable with being uncomfortable for a little while while you're making these changes. But I promise you that there is magic on the other side of those being uncomfortable. So you always have to step out of your comfort zone to experience something fantastic. And that's just the truth. Um, recognize what is action and what is procrastination. Educating yourself more, preparing more is not action. Okay, that is a first step. But action is to keep moving forward, to keep educating yourself to avoid doing something because you're a little afraid or you feel a little insecure about it is not action. Like really acknowledge that that might be procrastination because you might be a little scared and see how you can step forward. Maybe get someone else involved that can help you move forward. You're never going to feel ready to start something big or new or exciting. Um, you might, you're, you're just, there's never going to be a perfect time. So you'll have to just take a leap, like just start. Um, be comfortable with being imperfect with something. That feeling in your stomach may feel like fear, but it's really excitement, okay? Take action before you're ready. I believe this helps you reach your goals quicker. So before you're ready, you don't need to get all your ducks in a row. Just take action. Um, it kind of goes like this. Take action. That wasn't perfect. Let me make some changes and shifts. Move forward, take action again. Let me make some adjustments. Move forward, take action again until you get there. That's what it looks like. That's what life is. So you see, you just keep learning and moving forward until you get to where you're going. But most importantly, make sure you have fun while you're doing these things. If you're not having fun, then maybe you're not on the right path. Maybe you're not aligned with what you're doing. Because it's not more about reaching a certain destination. It's more about what you went through when you were going there. Okay, that's what you're going to look back and say like, oh, God, that was cool. Oh, God, that was fun. And when you get there, it might not, it might be anticlimactic. It might not be like, holy shit, I'm here. It might be more like, look at all that shit I did. I'm so proud of myself. Okay, you enjoyed the process. So you make sure you're enjoying the process. Okay, I'm going to go. That was the 12 steps. I know that was a lot of information. So what I'm going to do is put the link and you can grab it. Um, I've changed the name so many times that I can't remember what it's called. I think it's the ultimate guide to getting unstuck or something like that. But it'll be in the comments below the video. And I'll also put the free masterclass so you could do that. It's a, it's a great the masterclass is like an hour. I shortened it. I had another masterclass that was similar, but I shortened this and I made it like more. What's the word? I think it's more value packed. I added a lot of value to this one. Um, I really like it. I'm kind of like perfecting it. See, I'm taking action. <laughs> it wasn't perfect the first time. I listened to what people told me. They told me the other one was too long. So this one, I made one video. There wasn't like two. I think the last one was two videos. This one's one video and, and you get it immediately. You don't have to wait to get it. You get it immediately and it also gets emailed to you so you can watch it later. So I'm making it as easy as possible for you to move forward. So so the book will help you with all the steps I just talked about and the master class is a deep level self care master class. It's a it's a way to start your self care journey. Okay. I'll put those below. It was wonderful spending time with you today. I'll be back next Sunday for self care Sunday. I love you. Bye.